Okay guys, today we're back in the garage, the 2024 YZ125, and I'm gonna do a couple things today. One is I'm gonna install this new Boysen rad valve, right? Now, you're gonna ask why would I take the trouble to install a Boysen rad valve, even if it's a second generation rad valve. Um, why would I take the time to install it in the YZ125 when it already comes with a really good V-Force 4R reed valve, you know? Um, is it worth the expense, right? These things aren't cheap. Um, again, this is the second generation and it's supposed to be new and improved. Now, if you've looked at my videos on this bike, one of the goals I have for it is I'm trying to get more low end power and I'm trying to get a broader, smoother power band from the bottom all the way to the top. And I've done that a few ways. Again, you can see that in some of the other videos I've made on this bike. But the boys and rad valve is supposed to be another contributor to that. It's supposed to give us more low end power on this motorcycle over the V-Force 4. So that appeals to me. The other thing we're gonna look at today is the Smart Carb. Now the Smart Carb, as, a, as again, you can, you've seen a lot of my videos, you can go back and look at them. It's apparently a slightly longer than the stock carburetor. And that kind of pushes everything back a little bit and, and makes a minor adjustment as to where the air boot sits. Now, what that does is it causes the shock at the very top of the travel, um, the shock has a slight rub against the air box. And that, I've heard it happens on the YZ250 as well. Um, I can't verify that, but on the 125, there's definitely, the shock definitely rubs. It's a very minor rub. I'm really not worried about it. Um, but I've heard that if you put a Boysen rad valve on, it could make the problem worse. Now, I believe <clears throat> that information comes from the first generation of the Boysen rad valve. I looked at this one and really I'm, I'm thinking that the thickness of the block where it hits the manifold where it connects is really where it would create a bit more distance right push the carburetor back but when i look at this and i look at the v force this this boys and rad valve actually looks a little thinner back here than the v force so maybe a combination of the new v force being on the, the new generation yz and the next generation rad valve I think I might buy a little bit of uh, clearance. So that might actually be an improvement. I might get more low end. I might have a little bit more clearance on that rear shock. Um, now, a lot of people with the smart carb, what they're doing when they put them on the YZ125, they're sanding down the airbox a little bit. Um, some people are just letting it go as it is, probably what I would do. Um, but I'm gonna take a look at that a little closer. I'm gonna get down and, and see if I can see exactly where it's rubbing. Um, and take a better look at that. Um, and again, so a couple things, new rad valve going in, and we're gonna look at this uh, smart carb installation and just kind of dive into this uh, shock rubbing thing a little bit. So stay tuned, uh, let's get this bike apart. All right guys, so we're gonna take a better look at this smart carb install where the air boot is basically rubbing up against the shock coil. You can see it there trying to get the light in there better but it's kind of hard there you go so you can see right there that this is at the very top of the shock travel like the the, the back wheel is off the ground so it's just all the way extended and you can clearly see that the shock coil rubs against the air boot right there it's very very clearly rubbing against the air boot so that's um the issue and so you know, how you fix that, I don't know. You know, some, like I said, some people are sanding that down just to uh, get a little bit more clearance. I'm probably not gonna worry about it, um, but I'm gonna install this boys and rad valve and we're just gonna see if that makes like the slightest bit of difference. And maybe even when I reinstall it, I'm just gonna see if I can position this a little bit better, but let's have a look. I'm not gonna suggest that I'm gonna be able to fix this and I'm not gonna suggest that it's a major problem, but this is what a lot of people are talking about when they install the smart carb and the shock spring rubs against the air boot at the top of the stroke at the stroke of the uh, rear shock. So let's dive into it a little deeper. I'm going to keep going, get this thing apart and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, guys, got the raid blocks out. Obviously, the V force versus the boys in rad valve. Um, you can't even really compare these products. I mean, these are nowhere near the same other than maybe how they mount, right? But 
you know, you basically got a plastic built design. Pretty much everything's plastic on there. I'm sure it's durable. Um, this is all metal, right? Um, the way the reeds are designed themselves are completely different. Whether one's better than the other, you know, I'm not going to go into that. The other big difference I've noticed in these is the intake on the back of these. It's much, much bigger on the V-Force than the, than the Boys and Rad Valve. Now, my guess is that the Boys and Rad Valve, that's going to give you more velocity, right? It's going to channel the flow through faster through the smaller opening than this will. And maybe that's where you get a little bit more bottom end and response out of the Boys and I don't know. That's speculation, right? That's just a guess. Um, but that's the, probably the biggest difference is just those back openings where the fuel actually flows through, right? You're going to get higher velocity and probably a little bit lower velocity. Again, that's a guess. Um, now, the one thing I was really interested in is the thickness, right, because of the smart carb. So the V-Force read, you know, this, this bit here um, on the back where it connects up to the... Um, to the manifold on the cylinder, it's slightly thicker than on the Boysen. And, you know, we're talking one, maybe two millimeters at the very most, but it's definitely slightly thicker. So that's probably going to buy me a little bit more spacing on the Smart Carb, which is one of the things I'm looking for. Um, but other than that, um, I don't know if there's an argument over durability between these two. I've heard that the Boysen Rad Valve is more durable um, just because well it looks more durable feels more durable you know that sort of thing but you know real world i don't know i've seen these v-force blow up and blow through the engine um i've never seen that with a boysen um again i don't know maybe that was just circumstance um i'm not saying it's a bad read um the design looks really interesting and probably is very very effective it has to be it's all over the place on motorcycles these days. So, boys and rad valve. Um, this is the second generation again for the YZ, um, and with the smart carb, I think it's actually going to buy me a little bit more room. Um, this little uh, gasket was on the stock V Force. I think I'm just going to reuse it. It's not going to really add much, um, but overall, I think I'm going to get a little bit more space. But anyway, that's what they look like. So I'm going to get these all back, you know, I'm going to get the boys in, uh, installed, get it all back together, look at that spacing on the shock a little bit and see if it gives me any, uh, any clearance. And then once it's all back together, I'm going to fire it up and just see how, how it runs. If it sounds, I, I, I probably won't notice any difference at all until I'm riding it, but, um, let's get this back in there and just see what it looks like. All right. So there you got it. That's the, uh, boys and rad valve installed. Really super easy to install these. I just uh, pulled the whole uh, subframe off and moved everything back with the, the carb in place on the air boot. So I didn't even take that off. I just, yeah, anyway, it all went on really good. You can see uh, it's all nice and tight on there. That's the stock rubber boot, air boot. And I'm hoping again, I get a little bit more clearance. I'm gonna get this all back on there now and tighten it all down and just see if that bought us anything. I'm not expecting a lot. Probably still gonna rub maybe a little bit less, but uh, hey, I got a boys and rad valve in there and it looks good. All right, so I've got it back in there. Um, let me just kinda show you a few things. One is I've had a bit of a, there's a bit of a gap here and I'm gonna try to close that up a little bit, but that's where it rubs. Right, so I'm gonna, I don't think there's anything you can really do about it. I mean, you can sand the air box down or whatever, or the air boot, but um, you know, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna just make sure that when I tighten this clamp down that I'm pushed all the way over on here. But that's it, that's the rub. That's what you'll hear when it's at the very top of a stroke. I, I think it'll wear in over time, but you know, that's it, I mean, if you adjust the preload, it could change. If you change the shock spring, it could change. Um, so just something to be aware of. That's it. So uh, let me see if I could tighten this all up and then I'll take it off the sand and just see, see what it feels like. 
All right, well, I've done everything I can. I've got it, I got the subframe tight. I got, everything's tightened up. And uh, it's gonna rub mostly against this coil here. You know, you can, you can definitely tell it's rubbing. So am I worried about it? No, I'm gonna run it like that. Um, long term, who knows, right? I don't have a clue. Um, if there's gonna be an issue or not with this. I doubt it. I'm not super worried about it It'll probably just rub enough to where it's wore in but some people are sanding the air boot um, I'm not I'm not gonna do it and uh, I'm just gonna run it. So that's the install and uh, Yeah, so the Boysen rad valve is on there That's what it looks like in the end get these final hoses hooked up and uh that's where we're gonna leave it. So I'll get this thing uh, finalized, hook everything back up, take it out and make sure it runs. Just doing a quick round the bike, have a quick look at my setup here so you guys know. FMF exhaust. So I've been running this thing a little bit and there's like nothing dripping off the back of the exhaust. Normally you see a little bit of oil hanging off the back. Heck, that thing's that thing's clean, runs super good. I'll pull the plug and have a look later. That's the setup. What do you guys think? Smart carb, Boysen rad valve, BHM head. It all came together. 50th anniversary edition. This is a sweet bike. All right, boys and rad valve, smart carb installed, ready to go. See how we go, starting it up. So I'm real happy with this. Um, you know what? And now that I've rolled it out here and put on the on the stand, I haven't heard the shock spring because when I first sat on it, I heard the shock spring rubbing against the airbox. I don't even hear it now. So maybe I made a, a little bit of a difference there. What do you guys think? Pretty cool looking setup. I'm pretty happy with it. Runs crisp, super sweet. So that's it. Boys and Rad Valve, Smart Carb, VHM Head, FMF Exhaust. This thing should run like a rocket. We'll see. So I'm starting the bike with the Smart Carb, no throttle, just kick it over. that's sweet no no problem at all that's the setup guys